Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr, and no Christine this week. Uh, Christine is battling her post-accident issues, so no Christine. But we have with us returning once again. I think this is the fourth or fifth time. It's the twisted one, Vanna Pfeiffer. Hi, Vanna. Hi, Gary. Number seventy. This is this is Fiber Talk podcast. With a guest, number 70. Awesome. I can't believe we've done 70 of these, but we have. That That is awesome. I didn't realize, and I've listened to every one, and I didn't realize <laughs> it was 70. My goodness. Yeah, it's 70 of those, and I think we're at 52 of the midweek ones. Wow. So, yeah, how's that, huh? That's, that's, that's a, like, what would you call that? That's a kingdom. Yeah. A kingdom of yeah. great stuff. Uh, it's it's amazing, but hey, they're fun every time, so it's worth it. Okay, yep. all right, I got to know what happened to you. <laughs> what, what is the deal with quilting? You have just, <laughs> like, dove in head first here. Man, you've just gone crazy, and, and, and apparently you have some talent because those quilts look beautiful. <laughs> I don't know, Gary, you know me. I'm I'm all or nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's clear. That's the way yeah. it is. <laughs> that well is established. <laughs> and how this all got started was, I think it was like on January 2nd or 3rd, you know, it was that after the holidays and you're kind of having a little post, you know, holiday depression and someone had given me a uh, jelly roll and I looked up okay, on wait, YouTube. Wait, wait, stop. Stop right there. Stop right there. Okay. I don't know what a jelly roll is. Okay, what? so it's, it's what it is, is it's fabric that is pre-cut in two and a half by like 40 inches. So it's a like a, you know, like a yard of material is, you know, cut is 40, like 42, 44 inches wide. So it's a two and a half inch strip off of a yard of material. And there's like, it, they're usually done in lines of material, you know, like the the fabric designers will have lines and each of those lines will have maybe, you know, 20, 25, 30, 40, you know, pieces in that line. And so they cut off a two and a half inch strip off each piece of that line and then they roll it up so it looks like a, oh, like a jelly roll, like a jelly oh. roll cake, you know. So, it, so it's, it's a roll of strips of cloth of varying... Mm -hmm colors or patterns that all kind of go together yes exactly and oh, okay. so someone yeah isn't that great and i mean it's all cut and so i had this jelly roll and no that somebody just gave me and i and i i've had it for like maybe two or three years and it was by blackbird designs the cross stitch people also quilt you know they have a that's how they started out i think kind of through their quilting patterns and they have Moda fabric lines and it was a jelly roll from the Madeira or Madeira. I don't, I don't know how to say it. It's the drink. What's the drink? Maddie Madeira. Diet Pepsi. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I have no oh. idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm the last that. guy to know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, that it was from their line. And I know that a lot of, people covet that because it's no longer in existence oh. and um so i had it and i thought oh i ought to do something with this and i looked up on youtube jelly roll quilting and lo and behold there is a thing called jelly roll quilt race um a jelly roll race quilt and i watched the the video from missouri star quilts and um i made it in two hours i had a quilt <laughs> No. No kidding. I'm not lying. No. no, it's true. It's that fast. Wow. And I had the quilt top. Now not, not quilted and right, sandwiched right. and all that. Yeah. And um <clears throat> I was so impressed with myself and I've always wanted to kind of quilt, but you know, you have, have kids and that wasn't my you know, to quilt you have to have a lot of kind of a lot of stuff really. And um I just didn't have time to think about that cross stitch was my thing and now that I've got a little bit of extra time I thought mm, I might look into that I was just kind of dipping my toe into it I wasn't going to go whole hog and then I took my <laughs> this is where I, I I quit dipping and just 
dove right in. <laughs> I was taking my sewing machines in to get their annual, you know, blowout and lube and spa days. And um, when I was in my sewing machine center, which also is a quilt shop, they had classes for 2018. They had beginning quilting class. And I thought, oh, I did so good on that. Maybe I should just really, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just followed the tutorial, the YouTube tutorial. I may ought to try to take that. You know, I've got sewing. I know how to sew. I've taught myself that pretty good. Maybe I need to know the whole thing about quilting. So I took this beginning quilt class and it has just blossomed after that. I signed up for the beginning quilt class. And then the lady goes, who knows me at the sewing machine center said, you know, well, you could do this block. We're having a block of the month club. You could do this. And I was like, okay, sign me up. And then she said, oh, well, here we're having a free motion quilting class. Oh, you all need to do that. And so I took all these classes and um, I'm just really enjoying it. And I feel like I have a talent for it. So that's my story. I am, I, I think I can call myself a quilter. Well, yeah, all, all the, the quilts that you've shown I mean, it, it, talk about having some talent. I mean, it's clear that you know, everything meets up like it should and uh, uh, nice patterns. And I mean, the, the craftsmanship is, is obvious. So it's like you found a, another home. <laughs> I know. I, I really have enjoyed. Honestly, I have really enjoyed it a lot. And it's something since my whole life is cross stitch. I mean, every part of my life, my work my hobby, everything, it's kind of refreshing to have something different, you know? And I think that's why I've just really taken to it so, you know, so fast and it dove right in. It won't be my first love. Cross stitch is always, I prefer it, but I do like quilting a lot, so. Well, there's a lot to be said for having a diversion, yeah, a, a something different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it keeps your interest level up on both ends, yeah. It does. It does. And it, and it, you think there's a lot of math in quilting, you know, really, honestly, oh, there, is? there is. Oh, gosh. Yes. A lot. Oh. And um, so you have to, like, think. And it's like, you know, it's like that hard math, like one eighth and one sixteenth, <laughs> all that <laughs> stuff. And I have to, like, really think when I'm when I'm cutting out the patterns and stuff like that. So um, it just uses that brain, you know, my science scientist part right, of my yep. brain that I no longer use. I was going to say, and ha so, had, had to haul that out of the closet, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was like, whoo, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm using that part of my brain that I don't really use any much anymore. And so it's just really been, it's been very fun. I, I really have enjoyed, I have just really enjoyed it a lot. So now, okay, I'm excited help, about it. Help, help me with this a little bit. So you get the top. I get how the, the top is made. You take all these pieces, you sew them together, what one eighth mm -hmm. inch seams and press them open and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. then you got to put uh, some kind of batting and then a back on it and uh, mm -hmm. and then some kind of binding around the edges. Mm -hmm. the, so you make, yeah, you make your quilt sandwich and then you quilt it and then you put your binding on it. Oh, you quilt. So, so you make all those swirly single stitch lines or whatever mm -hmm. the pattern is and then you put the edge on yes mm -hmm. oh, yeah okay. are you do are you doing the quilting part or are you having that done well um i've not i'm the my first uh quilting class so my beginning quilting class i have the sandwich made and i have done a few straight line quilting so like um i use a walking foot on my new machine that i bought for quilting Mm -hmm. my juki and um so it's just stitching in the ditch and but this is kind of cool i was watching a video you know there's so okay so we talk about floss tube there is a whole like quilt tube i don't think they call it that. <laughs> that's my that's my coining <laughs> but there, but there's like a whole bunch of quilters that have videos and so i watched them and there's a i think her name is debbie brown she has she used this like really cool, she does a lot of straight line quilting, which is what you do on like a home sewing machine with a walking foot. And she used a, it's what it is, is it's a, um, like a circular saw laser pointer thing that you would stick on your, 
your saw to have a, a line to follow to cut, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so I bought one off of Amazon and I put it on my sewing machine. She taught me to do this. This was not my idea to put it on your sewing machine to make the straight line on your quilt. Oh. And so you fall, then you sew that line. And oh. so I've done that. So I'm in the process of quilting my first quilt and um, it's going pretty good. I, I, I mean, it's, you know, it's going to be a little rough because I'm not a pro at it yet, but I think I'm doing okay. So we'll hmm. see. Cause see my, my stepmother used to, she doesn't anymore, but she used to do quilts like crazy. Like all of her walls were covered with quilts and it was just kind of uh -huh. ridiculous. Uh, but she had one of those <laughs> those long arm deals yeah. down in the basement, and that right. was just amazing to me because I what what is you just put the whole quilt on and it just kind of goes like a robot. Yeah, um, like on a frame. Yeah, the yeah. and then it rolls it up. Now, see, I don't have one of those. Those are and some of those can be like as expensive as a house. You know, some of them. Yeah, I think hers. And, was, I think hers was plenty of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and <clears throat> some of them are like what you said—a robot. Like you program what you know how big your quilt is, and then start going. And I have a friend who actually quilted my first jelly roll quilt for me as a just as a gift to me. And she has a business, and she has a two long arm machines. One, I believe, as I understand it, just goes like a robot, like what you say. Yeah. And she has that thing going. She has so much business quilting that that thing goes 24 hours a day <laughs> with quilts just quilting quilts and then she, she does one on her long <laughs> arm that she that she controls herself so uh -huh. huh. and folks i know this is a, a stitching podcast but deal with it i, I gotta learn <laughs> <laughs> i gotta learn <laughs> so okay so then now i gotta know so you bought a, a new sewing machine so what yeah. was because you already have what two so what, I have what, two others. Yeah. yeah. What was the purpose of this one? Is this have more versatility for quilting? <clears throat> no, it's just a straight. It's a Juki. Um, oh gosh, I don't know what the number is, but it's the same one that uh, Lisa Bongian has from Primitive Gatherings. Gatherings, and she's a big quilter, and it's just a straight stitch. So all it does is forward and reser reverse. That's the only stitch that it does. Oh. And it's an industrial. Yeah. So it's an industrial machine. So it's all made out of like metal. It's not plastic at all. Oh, so, so it's that's very heavy. The, that's the deal then. So it can take a beating on quilts then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it has um, 1,500 stitches a minute, capable of doing 1,500 stitches a minute. So think about how fast. Holy smokes. It scared me. The first time, <laughs> yeah. The first time I used it, I didn't realize the gov. It has a speed governor on it. So you can go, it has a turtle. Hey, literally it has a picture of a turtle and a picture of a rabbit well I didn't realize it was on rabbit I just gotten it out of the box and I set it all up and I threaded it and I was like oh yeah we're gonna start going and I hit the the you know the <laughs> foot pedal and it scared literally scared the crap out of me it was going so fast <laughs> so <laughs> it's like a big it's a big Big sturdy machine, and um, but the reason that I got it was basically because of the, the heaviness of it, but the harp space. So the harp space is from the needle to where the motor is, the the space in between there. And my Janomes only have like a five inch harp space, and this has a ten inch harp space, so oh that's my. double. Oh my! So you can fit, you know, fit more between the the yeah. needle and the motor so oh, that's why okay. i did it okay because yeah because i didn't understand that <clears throat> because i knew that the two you had were you know pretty impressive machines and so i thought well what what could be more impressive than that for quilting but uh it's the durability then yeah <clears throat> and the and the fact of how fast it goes you yeah. know so i could do free motion quilting where it's that stippling round, you know, like what you were saying earlier, round and round circle scroll. You yeah. could do that on this machine too. Right now I'm just doing straight line quilting, but if I get really brave, I did take a class on free motion. <laughs> so if I get really brave, I'll try it. You have to, from what I have learned by watching, because they also have that on YouTube, how to free motion. It's more of a hand eye coordination 
type thing, and oh. I'm very dex. You know, that's what it takes to do the free motion. But I'm very dexterous, but I'm not very, um, like hand eye. Sometimes I struggle with that. So we'll see. Um, but I, that's why I got that machine. So it's okay. another one, and it's it's really it's a it's a very nice machine. But I've worked so much on my Genomies that I'm more comfortable with yeah. sewing yeah. on my Genomies. So well, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, like coming home. Yeah. 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 I, I, I got a kick out of the, the shot you put up somewhere where you had it in the back seat of the car and yeah. everybody was freaking out because he didn't have it visibly strapped down. <laughs> yeah. I had it hooked on the baby hooks because that car is a newer car. And so it has these little hooks. And so I just hooked it on that so it wouldn't tumble. But yeah, next time I take a picture, I'm going to have the seat belt on <laughs> because everybody was like, it's going to hit you in the back of the head if you stop that. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everybody, yeah, was, that was, everybody was looking out for you and your machine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand. So, okay. And then when I, I just got to know these things, when, when you say, what was it? The square of the month or something? What does that mean? Oh, the block of the month. Block yeah. of the month. So, yeah. So we're at the end of, I think it's November. So it's basically gone. I think it was six or eight months that we're working on it. Um, we do two blocks. They call it a block of a month, but really we've been doing two blocks every month. And by the end of November, every month, you go one time a month. So tomorrow is my day that I go for my block of the month. And I'll go and I'll, they'll, they'll give us the material and the pattern and we cut it out and we put it together. And there's a teacher there who really does not instruct us on how to put it together. <laughs> Basically, we just read the pattern and she's there to help us if we need help. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, so I'll be there like eight hours tomorrow. At the end oh, of the day, whoa. you'll have your blocks. Done. So it's not yeah, just a, it's not just day. a two-hour drop-in thing. Wow. No, no, oh. you, it's all day, and you can leave at any time. But I just go ahead and stay and get it all together since I don't know. You know, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but I think I do because the people. I'm the only. Okay, so I'm. I'll be 48 in July. For I'm 47 right now. And um, everybody there is probably in their 70s or 80s. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, you know, and I don't mean that. I, they, I love those ladies. They have just, you know, I have the best time with them when I go to that. And we just talk and chat and sew on our sewing machines. And um, so anyways, once a month we get two blocks done. And then in November we'll have an entire quilt. Oh, I see. So, so it's a stitch along yeah. for quilters then. Right. Yeah. And, but they, it's, you know, it's a, it's going to be a, I, it's not going to be, it's going to be a queen size quilt. So it's Holy kind smokes. of, I, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a huge quilt. So when you get done, you'll have a whole quilt top done, but you buy it. See, so you buy each month, you pay for the block. So I think that the blocks have been like $30 a month. So mm. think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 30 times eight. What is that? $240. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's, it's small increments, but I'm also learning so much, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, and, and you see other people, how they do things, how they approach things. And that helps me as a new quilter. I will say this is a compliment to me. They did not realize that I had never quilted before, that I had never pieced before Ooh. until the, Ooh. Sec, the, the second class, I guess. And I said something about, um, I don't know if somebody was like saying, well, you know, it's just like how you do, we were doing flying geese, the pattern flying geese. And I go, well, I don't know what, well, I don't even know how to do this. And they go, what do you mean? You've had to have made flying geese before. And I go, I've never quilted before. I've never pieced before. And they were like, what? You know, they didn't <laughs> realize it. And they go, well, you've just been doing it. You know, I go, well, I can read patterns, but I go, I don't really know what I'm doing. So Ever since then, I think I've garnered a little bit of respect from the from the ladies because they <laughs> didn't the realize masters. I'd never. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they didn't realize I'd never quilted before. But it's it's really fun. I mean, I really if anybody has any you know desires to do that, you ought to look into it because I have had a really great time 
you know, just getting together and learning something new. So try it if you want it. If you have yeah. any desire and if you have a quilting shop near you, you should try it. Well, I, I can tell from your posts. I mean, there's a, an element of enthusiasm there for you, you can just tell that you're excited about doing it. And uh, and, and the product is is, yeah, it's obvious. Is it? You know, you talk about uh, you'd never done it before, and you're piecing those things together. But it's really a variation from finishing needlework, isn't it? I mean, it, that's such a precise thing. I mean, yeah. It, it, yeah, and you know, but it can't see, be Gary, that big of I'm, a leap. I, it's I'm all self-taught. I never knew how to sew a, anything. I didn't even know how to thread a machine. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. And I just knew that you know, with little kids. And I didn't know they had anything like finishers out there. I mean, that's how dumb I was about everything. I just always did everything myself. And I always did hard finishes. And then I thought one day, I thought, I think this was like in 2007 or 8. And I thought, oh, I can like make pillows and stuff. I can do that. And so I taught myself everything I know. <laughs> so I, and, and seriously, all I've how I taught myself is by reading sewing blogs and of course YouTube. YouTube has been a huge part of my yeah, formation, yeah. my sewing formation. So that's how come I feel so strongly about doing tutorials myself because I have learned from others generosity. So that's why I try to give back on posting finishing videos because that's how I taught myself. And if I can do it, anybody can do it because I knew nothing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, when I got my sewing machine, which you know, the extent of my sewing has been making a cover for my magnifier from your pattern and, <laughs> and then putting edging around linen. So there you go. That's pretty impressive. But, <laughs> but the, you talk about, about YouTube, the, the night I spent three hours and could not get the bobbin to work. Uh -huh. hate, oh man, it was, I was just at the edge of throwing that machine across the, I couldn't get it to work. And so I, then I, uh, well, somebody surely is going to show me the trick on, on, uh, on YouTube. So then uh -huh. I found, I found one. And the first thing was make sure your threads going in the direction of the arrow. That's right. Yeah. And guess what? For two yeah, hours, works, doesn't it? for two hours, um, I had not having my thread go the direction of the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you just sit there with a red face. There's nobody around, of course, and you just red face because it's just embarrassing. But yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> then it worked. You know, surprise of surprises, it worked. And I mean, yeah, the bobbin, that whole bobbin thing. I mean, that can really screw that's, up that's, the work. That's and the I, devil's. That's the evil. Those yes, bobbins. it is. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. So, evil. and somebody ought to figure out how to do them better. That's just. <laughs> well, you know, and that's the that's the the bobbin that I'm on my new machine because it's a see my other my genomes are just drop and load and this new machine i have to do it like the old you know it's an industrial machine is what this new machine is and so you have to like thread the bobbin case and then load the bobbin case and all that stuff and i i i have problems with it still every time i thread it or load it or anything i have to pull out the instruction book <laughs> because i'm like how do i do this so, I mean, no, that whole bobbin deal, that can, like, make or break a sewing adventure for certain. I mean, it really can. So I feel you on that. Oh, that one night, it just about did. I'll tell you. It's like, come on, this can't be this tough. And <laughs> it wasn't if I just followed the directions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I'm impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, uh, now I'm, I'm doing um, – hit and miss but i'm doing a mary corbett embroidery um uh alphabet it's just simple uh -huh. alphabets that she she has an ebook simple alphabets and it's embroidery uh -huh. so it's just you know uh, lazy daisy and stem stitch you know there's nothing complicated about it so i'm doing right. those and but my my end game is to make some flat uh finishes like you do I want to be like yeah. Donna, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I want to make a stand up. And, and so then I had a couple questions and I've watched the videos. I, you know, I've watched the videos, but it's 
when you wrap the when you wrap the cloth around the board mm-hmm. and getting it square how yeah uh, what what it seems like there's a trick there well did you watch my latest flat fold one that one my, I haven't not, I've very... not gotten to that one no <clears throat> okay so the simple flat fold I tell you and I think that people don't realize this but I'm always learning. I mean, we all are always learning. And I, I'm i still learning on how to finish things and what is the best approach. So on my newest simple flat fold video, I lace it. And I have found that oh. lacing is very much more forgiving. Now, it's more time consuming. There's a lot more time involved. But... It's very forgiving, and I feel it's probably a little bit, um, I guess that it's probably more uh, archival. I mean, it. I mean, even though they say Joanne's, or uh, not Joanne's, Aline's tacky glue is acid-free, you know, I, you know, whatever. I don't know. But I will say that lacing, I lace everything now, and I started doing it kind of, in sporadically about a year and a half ago and then over the last six months I just lace everything so anything flat I lace it I don't glue it anymore and you can get those much more it's much more forgiving and you can correct mistakes easier by lacing so give a look at that video and okay. what how I do it to get straight is <clears throat> you know when you're cutting your boards for whatever size you want it so the first thing I do is I iron it and I lay it down and I figure what my margin, what, how much of that from the edge of your stitching to the edge of the board, how much of that margin, how much of your linen or your ground fabric do you want showing? In my opinion, less, the less, the closer, the tighter you are to that stitching, the more focused the more focus, I feel like the more focus is on that stitching, the tighter you are to it. You don't want a lot of margin because that draws your eyes away, like thinking, why'd they leave all that margin around? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Or at least that's well, how I well, think Well, but that's, it. no, you're, you're dead right because that's photography 101. Fill the frame with your subject uh, yeah. for, that, for that very reason. Leave a bunch of uh, stuff on the outside and your, your subject just recedes away. And right. no, that, that's just, that's basic photography right there. No, you're dead. Well, right. okay. I yeah. didn't even know. I'm oh, glad yeah. I, I like, I like tight margins. And yep. so I do like a fourth, a fourth to a half an inch around on all four sides is what I typically leave. And it depends if there's a, you know, like a, a, a square border, you know, those are, now that's hard. If you have like a, like just a, single stitch or a double stitch border that framing the uh -huh. stitching sure that that's hard to get that straight because it'll be you know what i mean it'll be wavy and then that and with me being as anal as i am that drives me nuts if i find that to be wavy or off a little bit and i'll work and work and work and if you glue that you can still pull it up and work it but lacing it you can just it's just easier and you can put a couple extra laces in if one place is wonky you know what I'm saying so I have been lacing everything like I said everything flat for the last I would say oh a good six six months at least right. probably longer longer than that and so I decided to go ahead and update because I'd never done a simple flat fold I did the mounted flat fold as a video and I decided to go ahead and do a simple flat fold as a video, video and show how I updated my thought process on that, and I laced it. And it um, it really does make a – I've done a couple different things on that video. I also add two pieces of mat board to the front. So actually when I make a flat fold, I used to just cut four pieces, and now I cut five pieces, and I glue – the top piece that's gonna I'm going to mount the needlework on, I glue two pieces together before I mount it. And that just makes that in my mind, <laughs> which can kind of be convoluted sometimes, <laughs> but in my <laughs> in my mind, that makes that piece stand out just a little bit, uh, just a little bit more. Uh -huh. And 
just focuses it right in on, you know, whatever edging you have is just secondary to the actual stitching. It's not, it enhances it as yeah. an afterthought. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I started doing that. Mm, gosh, I don't know. I started doing that like maybe at the end of last year. I just kind of tried it on a couple of my own flat folds because I like flat folds. That's one of my favorite finishes for m my person stitching is a flat fold and um so i started doing that on my own i thought mm, man this is really looking good and so i just did a couple more techniques on that newest video that um i feel brings all elements just makes it superior as a yeah as a bit as i think that's one of my best tutorials that i've ever done is that simple flat mm. fold well I to, I, i'll definitely watch that because one of the things that i have as a goal is to teach myself how to lace because for nothing more than I got to believe that will save me considerably on custom framing because of the labor yeah. involved. Yeah. I also have at Christmas time, I posted how I, um, how I frame because I frame all my stuff myself and are predominantly all my stuff myself. And, um, I lace all my things and it, and then I'll pin it on along the edge you know also into the foam core after i've laced it and um you're right if you get lacing down you can lace your own frame things and it'll just be a piece of cake and i use my quilting rulers you know my see-through big rulers i'm always measuring my margins to make sure that i hit whatever my margin is on all four sides and <clears throat> that's how i do it i know some people will pull a thread you know, like to be, that's their line. So they'll yeah, measure their yeah, margins mm -hmm. and then they'll pull a thread. But to me, that's just like, mm, I don't know. That would scare me to do that. What if he didn't pull the right thread? Yeah. You know I, what I mean? Yeah, I'd be hesitant too. Yeah. 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 So I don't do that. Now I will pull a thread if I'm going to cut, if I want to make sure that I'm going to cut it right. Sometimes I'll pull a thread if that's going to be where I cut it, you know, right. and then sew it. But I won't pull a thread. I don't. I'm hesitant about pulling a thread and then framing or, or finishing or whatever. I I just am hesitant about that. But I know people that say to do that. But I wouldn't do that personally. Yeah, I so. can see where I can see where that would would work because it would almost give like a groove mm -hmm. for for the on, on the edge of the foam core for the cloth to lay in. Right. And then sense. it won't be right. And it won't be seen because it's up in the, you know, the whatever that's called, the lip of the frame. You won't right. see that the linen is pulled. But to me, I just think, oh, yikes, you start pulling threads and that just scares scares me personally. Yeah. Now, I'm certain people will say, that's crazy. You, That's the way you do it. But that's not what I would do. I just measure, you know, I just measure my stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, I can see that makes you nervous or would make you nervous. I mean, if you're doing hard on her and you're pulling mm -hmm. threads, but but you've got something to hold the the surrounding area intact, you know, that's right before you pull them. But this this would not have that. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. So I and plus, what if you want to do something else with that someday and then you got pulled threads? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So because I just got done with an order where it was from a, a needle workshop and they were all models that she had had finished and um she wanted me to redo them like mm. refresh them uh -huh. and so you know i had i took them all apart from the models that she had and redid them into something totally different and if she would have pulled threads or anything like that i couldn't have you know redone them right, right. so it was um you know that i mean there you go that just goes to show you too you right. know but now that's in, that's yeah, interesting. Uh, and by the way, your hair is rubbing your mic again. Oh, sorry. Um, oh. I'm sorry. I'll pull it up. Okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> that, I hear, hear can you I hear me? I'm back. Okay. Now. I, yeah. Okay. 
it's a it's a new mic and the old oh. mic the old mic i used to just be able to brush the mute button and this oh. one you you physically have to click it and i'm i just i'm not quite getting it right um okay <laughs> but okay back to the deal here mm -hmm. that's that's interesting about having a finished piece refreshed mm -hmm. because you know i was thinking the other day i mean i see the stuff you do and i see it all over facebook the different i mean it's just a lot of innovation going on in the way pieces are finished and, yeah and it, and it made me think about that very thing taking something that and something old that was framed and say you know, that's nice in the frame, but if that was a stand-up, it would really be neat. And so then, right. you know, take it apart and do it as a stand-up. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, there's just it, it, there's just a lot of innovation and creativity anymore. Uh, and I think that gets back to all the sharing that goes on, on on the Internet and on Facebook. People are just seeing and getting more inspiration to do these things rather than just hang it on a wall. Right. And well, and you can, and it's so finishing is just, and, and I've refreshed things myself too. Like if I have an ornament that I feel looks nasty, I'll redo it. Uh -huh. So, you know, nasty. finishing can just, <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I've been doing ornaments since I was 15 years old. So think about that. And some of, you know, I've grown even in just in the last five years, I've grown in, my finishing abilities and um so you can just redo stuff and make it look better and that's exactly what i did is they, i mean i thought that the models that came here i'll be honest with you i'm like you know how designers say i don't want to see any other designers work because i don't want my mind contaminated with anybody any other designers work well, here they came as models that were already finished, and my mind was contaminated <laughs> because <laughs> I couldn't see that thing different right. from the way it was already finished. So I took it apart, and I really struggled with this because <laughs> I was like, I wanted to do a good job. And so I took them apart, but I kept on seeing as what it came as. So I took it all apart, and I ironed them, and I just laid them out, and I put them back in... I have a system where I have boxes and stuff and, and I put them back in their box and I did somebody else's models or I did somebody else's finishing. And then a couple of days later I got it back out and I looked at them again. So I could still see them as what they were when they came to me, but it wasn't as bad. And yeah, then I started yeah. finishing. And then once I got into the finishing, then it kind of flowed much easier easier and I got I really think I had a good set of finishes so you know that's that's kind of hard but you're right there's a lot of creativity a lot of people are coming up with wonderful ways of displaying their needlework and their passion um in creative ways besides framing and I think that's important because you can't there's only so much space on a wall and we all can't frame everything and I reserve only my most special things um, for framing and everything else I finish and, you know, something for my home. So yeah. I think it's important. I think finishing is a very important, you know, tool to have in your toolbox. Well, that, you know, that's just it. Your, your uh, flat folds and your pillow ornaments, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not necessarily to hang on a tree, but you see poop, a collection of those in a basket and the flat, mm -hmm. flat folds can sit anywhere. And as you've described many times to store them is nothing. And mm -hmm. so you can have seasonal changes or just, you know, rotate them or whatever. And it really gives right. a lot of versatility, not something you would have with things hung on a wall where yeah. you've got a nail and it fits there with a grouping. And if you change mm -hmm. it, it doesn't necessarily fit. So, right. Um, and that's why I like it. And you can do even people always, this is the number one question I get. Well, I have this piece and it's like 11 by 12. And can you do one that big? Can you do a flat fold that big? Yeah, you can do a flat fold that big. And um, and they turn out beautiful. They really do. And you can set them on a hearth or whatever. So Yeah, no, there's so many ways you can use them. And it, I, to me, it's, 
it's you, so many ways you can use them, but so many ways you can switch them out and keep your look in your house fresh. Yes. And, yeah. Different, different things, different uh, times of year, different seasons, holidays, so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, it's, uh, that's why, that's why it's kind of my goal. I want to, I want to be able to do those. Um, I, I got a feeling I'll just send them to you, but uh, <laughs> here, Vonna, do these. <laughs> You know, my husband always says, why do you post those tutorials? Because all you're doing is selling your, you know, like giving away your secrets. <laughs> you're going to run yourself out of business. I'm telling you, Gary, I am not running myself yeah. out of business. <laughs> and that's, and, you know, for every person that you have to have a lot of, you know, stuff to finish, to finish. I mean, I, I know that people do things on a, you know, don't do things on a grand scale as I do. And it looks great, you know, and, and it's fabulous. And they don't have like every little bitty techie thing that I have, but um, it does take a lot of stuff and a lot of dedicated time. I mean, that's what all that finishing is about. People always ask me, you know, I can't finish. Yes, you can finish. The only, the biggest largest component to finishing is time and it has to be time that's dedicated to finishing you can't be like cooking supper and finishing at the right, same right, time right. you have to just finish and think about what you're doing and anybody can finish there's no magic bullet to it anybody can do it and um but i, I some of my greatest my most loved pieces are pieces that I finished myself. And, and it's like what you say, you, you change them out seasonally. And I get excited, you know, like we're getting ready to, you know, I always change out from my spring Eastery welcome stuff, you know, Easter stuff to um, like my patriotic, because my whole house is patriotic in the summertime. And I have pieces that I only bring out at, you know, right before Memorial Day. And we're getting ready for the big change here soon where I'll decorate my whole house with that stuff that I only, you know, I haven't seen it since last year and I get excited about it, you know, right, because it's right. like, Oh, I haven't seen this. And, and every time I open up my box, it's like going up, you know, opening up a box of memories and that's how I think about it. So, um, you want to give honor to whatever you stitch. And I think, you know, spectacular, you know, finishing gives honor to the time that you spent stitching it. So yeah. that's how I think about it. Well, and, you know, and to that whole thing of doing the videos and giving away your techniques, yeah, you could make that argument, but there's a whole universe of people out there who are begging for two hours of uninterrupted time just to stitch. Right. And, and the thought of taking that time to finish something, you know, it's like, forget it, you know, send it to Vana yeah. and, or send it, you know, yeah, send it to Vana, she'll do it. And I can have those two hours to stitch or four hours or whatever it is. I mean, there's right uh, it, for a lot of people, it's you know just and, and I'm I'm one of them, quite frankly. You know, just give me a couple of hours of uninterrupted time where I'm where I'm awake. You know, mm-hmm. ten o'clock at night after a long day is not a good time. And <laughs> and quite frankly, I'd rather stitch than than uh, finish. So right, and that's know. a lot of people think that way. A lot of people are like, I don't want to do it. You know, I just want somebody to do it. And, um, and it's not like, I think people think, oh, it's going to be really expensive. I don't feel like I charge that much. Honestly, (laughs) I'm not getting rich, Gary finishing. (laughs) And, uh, (laughs) so I just, you know, it's just, I enjoy it. I feel like I'm marginally good at it. And, um, you know, I, it's, it keeps me engaged in life and my creative juices flowing. And I, I really do like, I can't see myself doing really anything else. And I, I wouldn't have said that three years ago, but yeah. I, well, I, I do believe that. You know, and, and look what it's allowed you to do. It's allowed you to leave, leave that job you had and be at mm-hmm. home and be at home where your kids are at when they come home mm-hmm. and uh, work your own hours, though I'm sure they're quite long. And, Very and, long, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and because, you know, that's the old, the old thing that people don't understand. Yeah, I get to have my own business and... Yeah. Yeah. Put in the hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It. It's, um, and you're never, you're never away from it. Right. Right. You know, I'm always at work you know yep. I mean? because oh, yeah. it's just down in my basement and it's hard for me to, you know, I get up and I have, I treat it like I'm going to work. I mean, I'll, that's what I'll say. I'll get up, you know, I get up at four 30. I get my husband off to work. Now that the sun's coming up earlier, 
on the time I, I make sure that I go outside and I, I do my walk or my bike ride or whatever. And then I come back, I get my kids off to school and then it's, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to work. You know, that's yeah, what, and yeah. I go down and I go to work and I have a set lunch time where I spend, you know, at least 20 minutes doing something, not finishing. And then I go back and I work until four o'clock and then I try to stop. I do stop and go up and make supper, but, and then I try not to come back down after supper <laughs> and that's a hard, that's hard. If you're yeah. like, in the, you think, oh, well, I just have to put the cording on this or I just have to do this or I just wanted to cut this out. And a lot of times I'll come back and my, you know, come back down and you know, before I know it, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, it's gone. And my husband will go, you need to stop. Yep. There is tomorrow, <laughs> you know? So yep. that's, what's hard for me is just to think, you know, no, I would not be working. If I was in an office somewhere, I would not eat supper and then go back right. to work. Right. And I've got to remind myself and that's hard, but yeah, I'm working full time hours and I haven't worked full time hours in 20 years. Yeah. And, um, that's, that's sometimes, a li- and I'm not making the, I'm not making the salary I would make if I was making, <laughs> working full time in a laboratory, but that's okay. Like you said, it's a give and take type thing. And, um, yeah, I'm enjoying Vaughn, myself I, I have a, and, I have a sense you sleep better at night. So, um, oh yes, I do. I don't have <laughs> panic attacks. I yeah, don't have, yeah. yeah, I mean, and I'm just here with my cats and they love me no matter what. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm ha- I know I'm very much more happy. I'm much more settled in life than what I was two years ago. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yeah. So, and I'm blessed that so many people want me to finish their things more, even more. My husband says, you are a victim of your own success. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that makes me happy that I, I'm able to do that. Sure. So, well, and yeah. that's the hardest thing. Cause Marga and I work at home too. And, mm-hmm. uh, and we, we work two desks in what used to be our son's bedroom. And mm-hmm. when we first started, that was the hardest thing. We had to consciously tell ourselves, stop. And, yeah. and especially on weekends, we would get talking about work. And it's like, what are we doing? Stop this. And it, mm-hmm. it really is a discipline. That, and Because it, it is. It's so easy. And, and Marga does it more than I do. I've caught her more than once uh, when I'm downstairs watching TV and she'll disappear. And then, uh, what do you, where'd she go? What's she doing? And she's up there at her machine. Well, I just wanted to edit this last article and get it done. And yeah. it's like, no, do that tomorrow. It's because it, because mm. you you burn yourself out if you're not careful. And right. Yeah, you really do. And I and I had and I do. Uh, last, I'll be honest with you. Last December, I was really. Whew, I was. Oh, I know. Out. I could I could tell by your comments you'd had enough. Yeah. Yeah, I was getting. I was done. And um and I never really. I always want to try to. My goal is to be done with all my Christmas finishing by the week of Thanksgiving. That way I can enjoy my 24 days of Christmas on on my blog (laughs) and and enjoy Christmas without guilty feelings. And I got done for the most part with all my deadline stitching, but then I had people, Oh, but I just, Oh, please. I just need, and I've been such a good client. Well, how I can't tell anybody. No, (laughs) that is just like a personal flaw of mine so I was working right up until Christmas and then I thought okay now I'm done I'm not working again until the end of January I had so many people send me their things you know just put me in line you don't have to do it but it's here and it kept on piling up and guilty guilt guilt yeah 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 (laughs) that's exactly right and it piled up and I started working like you know, the second week in January and I've yep. been working, I just to, with today, I finished nine ornaments today. And with those ornaments, I'm up to 196 finishes since like the second week of January. Holy smokes. So, wow. Yeah. Oh, we should and mention, got, what, what, what is your deadline for Christmas now? We should get that out there. September 1st. I'm not accepting anything after September 1st. <laughs> And I might have to move that up, Gary, depending on, I've got about approximately 36 people in line right now. And, um, I'm working about, you know, they always ask me, what's your turnaround time? Because if everybody wants, let's, I mean, we're all guilty of this. Even myself is guilty of this. I want everything yesterday. And that's the same way it is with finishing. I'm running right now about a seven week turnaround and I've, 
what I'm finishing right now was in came here in the middle to late March. So I'm running about, you know, six, seven, eight weeks turnaround. And so I, uh, I'm thinking September 1st, that's what it typically has been historically had been. But if I don't want to put myself in the same situation I was last Christmas. <laughs> so if I see by the end of July that I've got a lot of stuff here, I might have to move it up a couple weeks and just say, you know, cause I'm one person. And like I say in my business plan, when people ask me for their, you know, can I see what your pricing is and all that stuff in my business plan, I say, you know, I'm one person and I don't have elves that come out and help me at night. <laughs> and so, you know, I have, that's, that's the way I look at it. I don't have elves that come out and help me at night and I'm one person and it's a handmade product and it takes time on a good day. Uh, today was a phenomenal day. But this was something that I was familiar with, and I had finished many of them before, and they were just flat ornaments. And, you know, I hand sew all of my ornaments together, even the flat one. I don't use glue. And um, so to finish nine ornaments in seven hours, wow. that's phenomenal. That's moving. <laughs> That's moving. Yeah, I was, I was, I did not get up to go to the bathroom. I was just sitting and, and working. But, um, you know, I told my husband if I could catheterize myself, oh, I no. probably would. <laughs> no, that, that's but, not a, that's not a mental image I want, Vonna. Stop it right there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I, uh, on a good day, I can get like four or five finishes done in a good day. And there's many packages that are more than, you know, like 12. There's like today was nine. I have people with 12 pieces. I draw the line. I don't want any more than 12 at one in one package because that's typically like almost a full week of work. Yeah. 12 things. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyways, that's, um, you know, I say I have like 36 people waiting and that's probably like probably over 200. Well, not 200, probably at least 125, 150 finishes. <laughs> mm. Oh gosh. Yeah. So, well, anyways, hey. yeah, it's uh, the alternative is no good. So, <laughs> you just, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So I just keep on plugging. That's keep right. On chugging. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You could go back <laughs> to the corporate world and work. You know. Yeah, that's right. I don't think so. I'll yeah. just keep okay. on finishing. Well, Honestly, <laughs> I really do look forward to I coming down here every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go back to the corporate world. No, nah, that's all right. I'll be in my basement. No. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'll, good. I'll just be down here yeah. with my cat. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, I, there's been quite a few things posted lately about starting and ending threads. And it's, it's something I obsess over. I mean, absolutely obsess mm -hmm. over, probably ridiculously so. But I just have this <laughs> this fear that somewhere along the line, one of mine, one, uh, you know, a, a stitch is going to come undone. And, right. you know, I just have that fear. And um, so so that I wanted to ask you, does that happen when you're working on on pieces? Do you have stitches come undone where they were not secured properly? Does that happen um, a lot? A lot it doesn't or some? Happen. Or? No, it doesn't happen at all typically on, well, I can't say at all. It has happened before. And I'll just... I'll just restitch it. You know what I mean? I'll like, if I can, I'll try to use the same thread that came unpopped, that came, that popped. Or if it's too, typically what it is, is it's just that they went under one leg of X and cut it really close. Well, there's not much to work with. So right. I'll either, if I have that pattern, I'll see what the color was and then restitch that one X myself, or I'll call them and, tell them hey you had this what is that and they'll tell me what d or you are know, i'll try to match it if it's just one stitch it's not a big thing i have had that happen before but that was totally an error on their part by not anchoring it better you know what i'm saying right but um where it frequently happens and this is had happened oh i would say out of 10 pieces that have these things on it it would happen seven times i'm not kidding so that's Ooh. a very high percentage yeah. is when they have like beads or jabco buttons oh. jabco buttons particularly um they just like you need to tie those things on and i think i told you that on your on your stockings didn't i didn't i say yeah. oh, yeah. tie it on oh no that, yeah. that was one, the one instruction you gave me and i yeah i 
knotted those suckers down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And those yours was one of the best ones I'd ever finished, but that I'm serious. Um, and I know that it was because I told you to do that, <laughs> but like, you know, like tie those things, tie your Jabco buttons on, go through it. You know, like some people will just go through it once and that's it. And then like, you know, run their, their ending thread just through a row of stitches. Well, that's not enough to hold those on. No. And I mean, especially if you're making a, pillow where you have to turn it out or something like that and you're put you know you're pushing the whole thing through a little bitty you know hole that it just pulls them off and there's been times where I've lost like I've been finishing something or not even finishing it yet just you know laying it out to like measure it and a button will pop off and mm. I'll have to and I've lost one before and I've had to go buy oh, geez. <laughs> you know I mean just stuff like that so I, I, that has made me, I was always kind of anal about that anyway, but it has definitely made me more anal about it since I've been finishing that you tie those things on and nobody's going to see that because it's right. It's going to be hidden by the button. Nobody's going to see a bump or a lump or anything like that. And you tie it on and you knot it on to keep it on there. Yeah. So that's the number one thing that I can say. I have not seen pop stitches like, you know, like what you're talking about. In not ending properly, that's not very common. But on buttons, that that is very common. And charms, that's very common. Yeah. Oh no, I those, those all those are knotted down. I guarantee you, they ain't going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what you want because that when you think about it, through especially like on your shepherd's bush stockings, those are going to be used and handled. Yeah. And you know things like that, and you don't want those flying off and losing them. You know, you want that to be nice you know, their lifetime. Right. So, you know, knotted on there, anything that's going to be handled a lot, you want it knotted on there. And I think that people, you know, what's the number one rule, if we're going to follow rules of stitching, well, don't do, no, no knots, no knots right. on cross stitching. Well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to forget that when it comes to charms and buttons, you need a knot, you need to tie it on there. So, yeah. oh yeah, that's I the mean, one thing. I, I, I oh, the thought of knotting actual stitching just scares me to death. But, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those extra things, especially ones that can snag on things. Um, yeah. You know, na nail them down so they they aren't going anywhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and I mean, I, there's even been times where if I think that they're, you know, let's say I finished something and I think that button is not going to stay on there. I've even, like, placed just a little bit of glue right behind the shank, you know, like where the two uh -huh. holes are on the back side, yep. just to like hold it a little bit because I know that it'll fall off eventually if I don't do something, right. you know, to, to anchor it on there. So I've even done that. And, um, so yeah, you want to just make sure that's the number, that's a, a number one good tip for anybody finishing anything of their own products. Make sure that those buttons are tied and knotted on there yeah see I, these things fascinate me because to me it's it's a way to learn because when you get them by the time you finish it you you probably have handled it more even as gentle as you are, can can be handled it more roughly and more in more ways than any stitcher handled it all the way through and so oh it, yeah it really puts a test on how well those threads are put into the cloth and anchored and, mm -hmm. uh, and especially any, any uh, ornamentation. And right. uh, so you, to, to hear that, that, that you're not seeing uh, stitches pop out and that it, it, the, the place people really need to focus is the ornamentation. That's, that really speaks well of, of all the people who are sending you, you uh, the projects. Right. And, and I really, really honestly, you know, people, another thing that I always hear is don't look at my back, you know, like <laughs> my backs are perfect. <laughs> They're not perfect. And, you know, don't look at my back. Oh, I'm not a very good stitcher. Don't, you know, I hear that all the time and I don't like necessarily look at, I really don't even, I guess I do look at them. I don't judge them though. I think people think in my mind, I'm going, boy, this person, yeah, why yeah. in the world is she even stitching? <laughs> I don't even think like that. And, um, but I do everything I can 
in my finishing, and I think about it hard. I mean, I do put a lot of time thinking about stuff like this, and I've evolved, and I've learned as I've finished, but I do everything I can when I finish something for someone to make it so that that stitching will never, you know, that stitching is protected on the backside. That's why I use interfacing. That's why I line it. You know, all of those things so that those stitches won't be popped or torn out or, you know, snagged or whatever. Right. And um, I think that <laughs> that's, in, you know, that's important to a final product. You know, as a, per, you know, I guess I'm a, considered a professional, you know, I'm, pre, I'm saying that I'm a professional. I'm trying to give you a product that I finished professionally and I want it to stand up to the testament of time and, and to be beautiful forever, you know, as, you know, as long as your lifetime or whatever you have it or whatever. So, but yeah, no, I don't see very many pop stitches. I really don't. Like I said, occasionally you, you'll see one and it was just like they cut it too close or only put it underneath one leg of the X, but I don't see it that often. I really don't. And not That's at right. all. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep obsessing over it. So <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Vana, we're going to end it here because if I start the next one, it'll be another half hour. So we're going to end it okay. here. Okay. <laughs> all righty. All right. Thanks no a lot. Really appreciate the time and always, always fun to talk with you. Well, thank you, Gary, for having me. I truly enjoy talking to you and coming and, and being here for your audience on Fiber Talk. And you do a great service to the industry. You honestly do. And for all the stitchers out there that listen to you, this is a wonderful venue for learning and, and meeting new people. So thank you, Gary. And thank you, Christine, if you're listening, for all that you do for us. Well, thanks. Glad to do it. And thanks to everybody for listening. And we will be back. Christine and I will be back on Wednesday. Wednesday.